The case of Peabody was the first High Court case to discuss Part 4a. There are two major principles arising out of this case. The first principle from Peabody relates to issues of the first and third requirement of Part 4a, that there be a scheme and that there be a dominant purpose of obtaining a tax benefit. With a given set of facts, there is usually more than one way that the tax office can identify what the scheme is. Generally, a scheme can be identified broadly or narrowly. Let's see what we mean by this by using an example. Say you're starting up a retail store and you decide to put this into a trust structure so that you can split the profits with other members of your family so as to minimize tax rather than attributing all the profit to yourself. To set up the store as a trust, you seek the advice of a tax accountant who advises you to go with the trust structure to minimize tax and then helps you to set up the trust. Then through the trust, you lease retail premises, purchase stock, advertise and hire employees, run the store and distribute the profit to various members of your family. One way the tax office could identify the scheme is in a narrow manner. The tax office could focus on the steps which were directly aimed at reducing tax, such as seeking the advice of an accountant, setting up the trust, and distributing the trust profits to family members. If the scheme is identified narrowly in such a manner, then it will be easier to fulfill the third requirement of Part 4a, that the dominant purpose of entering into the scheme was to obtain a tax benefit. This is because the steps of narrowly identified schemes mainly comprise the tax minimization actions. Another way the tax office could identify the scheme is in a broad manner. The broader scheme encompasses a wider set of facts that not only incorporates the tax minimization actions, but also the actions of successfully running a retail business for profit. Consequently, under the definition of the scheme, it is harder to prove that the dominant purpose of entering into the broad scheme was to obtain a tax benefit, because it could be argued that the tax minimization aspect was only a minor aspect of setting up and running a retail store for profit. In Peabody, the High Court made a few points on this issue. Firstly, sometimes if too few steps are identified, then there will not be a scheme in the first place, but only part of a scheme. This means that while it is in the tax officer's interest to identify a narrow set of facts as a scheme, if they are identified too narrowly, they might not constitute a scheme. According to the court in Peabody, this will be the case where the identified steps are incapable of standing on their own without being robbed of all practical meaning. Peabody also made the important point that the tax office can potentially identify a scheme in alternative ways. This, in effect, allows the tax office to hedge their bets. For instance, the tax office can argue to the court that a narrow set of facts constitutes a scheme. The tax office can also suggest an alternative, broader set of facts as a scheme, so that if the court thinks that their narrow suggestion is too narrow to constitute a scheme at all, the court will accept the broader suggestion as a scheme. The second principle from Peabody indicates that it is sometimes important for a tax office to identify the correct taxpayer in fulfilling the second requirement of Part 4a, that of there being a tax benefit. For instance, take a hypothetical individual taxpayer that owns 100% of a company and assume that the company does not distribute its profits in the form of dividends every year. The company undertakes some tax minimization actions, that is, a scheme to eliminate its assessable income for the year. If the tax office brings a Part 4a action against the individual taxpayer, they might not be able to show that the individual taxpayer had any reduction of income for the financial year. Remember, the requirement of showing that the taxpayer has a tax benefit compares what happened with the scheme with what would have reasonably be expected to have happened without the scheme. Here it could be argued that with the scheme, the taxpayer has not earned any accessible income from the company. However, it could also be argued that, but for the scheme, the taxpayer would not have earned an accessible income from the company. Only the company would have, and the company would not have necessarily have distributed its income to the taxpayer. This means that the individual taxpayer has not had any tax benefit. 
However, had the tax office assessed the company under Part 4A, it would have been able to show a tax benefit because the company has lower assessable income compared to what would have been reasonably likely to have happened had it not entered the scheme to eliminate its assessable income. The case of Spotless, the second High Court case on Part 4A, is also noteworthy because it made clear that it is possible for a scheme to both have a genuine commercial purpose while at the same time fulfilling the third requirement of Part 4A, that the scheme was entered into with the dominant purpose of obtaining a tax benefit.